G'day guys, welcome back to the channel again today. If you're new here for the first time, my name's Ty. I do a lot of overland, off-road, full drive, camping reviews, gear reviews and things like that. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you're into that sort of thing. Um, today guys, I want to go over the whole process of what we're doing with the F250. So as you've seen in the, one of my past videos, we did a kind of walk around of the truck and what I'd done to it so far. And I ended up selling the canopy and selling the draw system. And now you guys know that we are going to a tray and canopy setup. And the reason why I've now come to that decision to swap out what I just spent so much money on um, putting it together is because I got into a bit better financial position um, with work and stuff like that. And based off what my next truck is gonna be, this tray and canopy should be able to move straight over to my new truck and adopt straight on. So in saying that, it's still very much up in the air with what truck I'm gonna get next after this one. I still will have the F250 for a while, um, but the whole tray and canopy and the amount of money and time invested in it will be able to move to my next platform to continue on for the channel. So there may be a few things here and there that will change, but um, that's kind of why I've gone with buying the, the train canopy now. And next year we're looking to do some big trips. Um, and the, the, the canopy was just not going to work. I was trying to get someone to redo the side windows and everything for me. And I just couldn't find anyone to do it. So it just it come to the crunch. And I just said, no, nah, that's it. I'm gonna just go and get the train canopy. I'm gonna go all out and and just and just bit the bullet and did it. So another problem that I had was that I didn't want to liaise on with people that were so far away. I wanted to kind of be hands on to document the build and stuff like that. And I really couldn't find anyone locally to do that for me. So at, at first I was gonna go to um, Outback Customs in Queensland. Um, and then I just decided not to do it. And then I was going to go to uh, Boss Aluminium and they were down in Melbourne. And it was just, it was so far away for me to document the thing and the process of building it and everything for the channel that it just, I just didn't end up doing it. So then I got wind of a recently new company, only a few years old now, that started up in Newcastle called Mitz Alloy. And seen some of the work that he had been doing. Um, the D2 79 is a really nice truck. Um, I was talking to the guys at TJM Newcastle. They're the ones that kind of put me onto Mitz Alloy and they showed me their 79, um, which was absolutely awesome build. So talking with Tim from Mitz Alloy, we um, come together and we finally, um, yeah, sorted it out and now we're going through the process of um, building the truck, designing the truck, and, and, and so forth. With my next truck, in mentioning that before, I think that it all depends on what Toyota does at this stage. If Toyota does bring the Tundra to Australia, I highly think that that's the direction that I'll go, and hopefully there isn't too many modifications with the tray to fit the Tundra. If that's not the case, um, and Toyota doesn't do anything, which I really think they should because the amount of CHOP 200 series that are getting out there, that would really, I think the Tundra in Australia would, would go off. I think they would sell like hotcakes. They would, it would be unbelievable. So I really think Toyota should jump on that before, before not too long. Um, I think it's time. Um, Ram has had great success with the 1500, the 2500 and so forth. Um, and they've just recently moved to 24 hour production. So people want to tow more, they want to carry more. And that's just the way that the market in Australia is going. The small ute market, it's just, it's still there, but only because the availability of the American trucks isn't. So if Toyota brings a Tundra, that's the direction I'm going to go. If they don't, I'm going to go to the F250 again. So that's what's going to be happening in the future. I'm talking probably 12 months down the track, if not two years. Um, so yeah, depending on what happens with those trucks. 
in saying all that, today, recently we went down to Mitz Alloy. Um, I dropped the truck off last week. They're slowly pulling things apart underneath it, um, getting the tub ready to be removed tomorrow, they said. And then they can start the CAD design work, start taking measurements and so forth. So I'm gonna to put together a three, four part series for the channel, for you guys, of uh, the process of tear down, design, fabrication, electrical, and then total completion of the build. So this is just an introduction to that. So there will be follow up videos to come to this one. So today we went down to MITS, like I just mentioned, and um, looked through the workshop, checked everything out, seen what, what sort of work they'd done to the truck so far. There was a bunch of wiring and stuff hanging down from the truck. So, hope you guys uh, grab a cold one. I've got one, I've just gotten home this afternoon after a big day out. So, yeah, grab a cold one, grab a six pack, sit down and enjoy this video and the uh, series still to come. So we've just pulled up now at Mitz Alloy in Newcastle. We're in the Ranger Raptor. We're gonna go and check out the F-250. I dropped it off last week. And we're gonna see exactly what the guys have done so far to the truck. Um, it's sitting out in the car park at the moment. And we'll go look at some of these other cool builds that they've got here. Um, we'll look also look at Tim's truck. His Hilux is absolutely awesome. And then we'll just do a quick walk through the factory and uh, show you guys some of the process on um, how they put these awesome trays and canopies together. So yeah, let's go check it out. Hello right, guys, well here's the F-250. Looks like the boys have got a bunch of wiring pulled out of it already. So guys, I just spotted this brand new Ram 1500. Getting ready for a tray to go onto it. So I'll have a quick look at this uh, rear coil set up while we've got the tray off. Pretty cool, gonna be a nice tidy little truck. So it's got a set of uh, yeah, KMC wheels on it. We've got a Adam Green Trees rig of a 79. Thing looks sick. Parked next to the F250. Hey guys, we're down here at uh, Mitz Alloy. So that's his truck, busy boy. So we'll go in and check out the factory. So some of the options you can get, you can figure your whole canopy basically whatever you choose. So you can set it up for complete touring, you can set it up for just weekend camping trips, you can have a quarter canopy, half canopy, a full canopy, anything. Your imagination is the only thing that's limiting this. So you can basically just go all out. And you can also package electrical systems in your canopy from here at MITS. They've now just started doing the Enerdrive systems, which basically go in the headboard of the actual canopy. But you can option for different types of slides and stuff that you'd like configured in different spots, different trays that you'd like here or there. So it's basically open to your choosing exactly what you want inside your canopy and it can be configured in any way.
So just here we've got a couple of the prefabricated drawers. So this is just a full depth drawer here. Um, you can also, this is a smaller one, so this is slightly wider than this one. Um, but you can configure these in any option that you like. Um, you've also got here which has a drawer and also a tray that comes out as well, so that tray slides out. I would slide it out for you guys, but because they're not mounted, um, they'll be top heavy and they'll fall over. So, um, And then you've got another wider one just here. Then you've got all the clear view gear as well, so all their uh, easy slides for yeah, any options. So that's that's one down here. That's obviously for a pretty, a pretty small style fridge. Um, that one, so that's probably like a, maybe a 40 litre or 30 litre fridge, that slide there. So it's not very large at all. Um, but then they've got the prefabricated toolboxes. So that's why they're able to pump these canopies out really fast, because they have a lot of pre-made gear. So this is all the pre-made toolboxes ready to go to configure to any style of tray or canopy setup that you're gonna get. Mostly allocated for the standard style Australian dual cabs. Um, they've also got our roof racks here, so they can go on top of your canopy as well. But look how many bloody, look at all the clear views guys, there's bloody hundreds in here. So definitely a popular, popular option by the look of it. Um, we'll just come over here to some of the uh, water tanks as well. So they've got all these poly water tanks here ready to go. Bunch of different literages, whatever one you want. So. I'm going for 130 litres, so it's basically, I'm pretty sure it's, pretty sure it's this big sucker here, I think, I think it's that one, although it could be the big flat one that they've been talking about, so these ones here, I think these ones are for your headboards, so they actually go in the front of the headboard like you just seen on that 79 with the raw canopy that was just about to roll out the door, um, so they've got another tray here, which is um, ready to obviously get fitted. Um, they've got a couple of, look like half canopies just here. So we'll take a closer look at them. So you've got this, uh, the aircraft tracking here on this top. It looks really cool. And you've got like this roof rack, custom made roof rack system with all this CNC machined out, routed out uh, roof on it, which looks really good. Also, um, you can opt for the jack off legs as well. So they do have the jack off points where the jack slide in so you can wind your canopy off and on and I have optioned for that. So I just found some, um, some jack off legs so that's basically what you get. So these poles just here slide in to the side of your canopy and then your legs just wind straight up, lift your canopy off, drive out, go adventure for the day and then come back, wind your canopy back on but that way if you've got a rooftop tent and like an awning and stuff like that you can leave your like base camp set up. Um, or if you're a tradie during the week or you need your flat tray, really cool option to have a wind off setup. So that's exactly why I opt for that, is that way I can leave a base camp somewhere, I can go and adventure some tracks for the day, check some stuff out, come back, base camp's already set up for the night, I'm not rushing back to then set everything up. So That's a bit of a wrap up on Mitz's whole process down there in Newcastle and what you can expect if you go in there and get your train canopy built. So guys, basically this truck I'm gonna refer it to Project FTech is what I'm gonna refer this build to as. So that way you guys know straight away with the videos that are gonna be coming out, it will be Project FTech and it'll be, a, it'll be a series. It should be around three to four videos long. Hopefully if it's longer than that, then, then great. It's more content for you guys. Um, I just don't want it to kind of drag on forever. But anyway, in saying that, that's the first video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm certainly pumped. I can't wait to get this truck built. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Can't wait to finally get in it and, and start going away and traveling and um, doing some of this awesome content that I love producing. I just, I love, I love doing this. I wish it was my full-time job. Unfortunately, it's not and it doesn't pay the bills. And um, yeah, so if you guys into this, hit the subscribe button. And um, you can enjoy the journey with me of building this truck. And um, yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video. See you.